All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us under the library. This is our Call of Cthulhu podcast set in a homebrew universe built by our keeper. If you happen to like what we are doing here and would like to support our show, there are two ways you can do that. First, you could head over to patreon.com slash under the library and support this here show. Or you could go to drive through RPG and search for the snake's oil, which is a module written by our very own keeper set in season one of this show. Also, if you are a role-playing gamer and would like to improve your role-playing at all, or if you're a GM and would like to improve the role-playing of your characters, you should check out our other show. That is what we talk about. It is called Up Your RPG and can be found wherever you get your podcasts. With that, let's start a show. My name's Arthur. I'm going to be playing Buddy. We are once again without Chris and we are without Wayne tonight. So that means that I am joined by Scott as Eddie, Emily playing Joe, Rick as Sam, and as always, our keeper is Michael. Michael, take that show away. All right. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for joining us. You know, one thing that we forget about is that we have our challenge. If we, or when we hit 500 Twitter followers, we're giving away a copy of the Malleus Monstrous. So if all of our listeners just went over there and hit subscribe on Twitter, we'd be giving away a copy of that. It's a really cool book. All right. With that, uh, our disclaimer, we are an improv show, so we never know quite what's going to happen. And uh, there are potentially uh, bodily harm, gore, violence, and other gross things from the beyond. Um, and with that, if you'd consider going on a date with Rick, then you're probably in the right place for the evening. And I'll hand it over to Emily for our recap of last week. Okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. So Carly and Joe are in Carly's house with sister Bielo Pushkin. They tell her that her brother is dead and how he died. And uh, she, rather than seeming distraught, she seems strangely okay about everything and actually thinks that there's a government plot and he was switched after the abduction and he is not dead after all. This is very hard for Joe considering her own losses and she breaks down and leaves the room. Sister B goes back to speak to Carly in the bedroom, but Carly just wants her to leave. And she eventually does leave, but on the way out, she pokes around the house a little bit and strangely sees no pictures of Richard, no pictures at all on the walls of the house. So we'll leave that for a moment and go over to Buddy, who is tailing Lana down the street. She heads for the locked theater and disappears down a side alley. Buddy and Eddie decide to go home and sleep before trying to catch up with Lana, since it is nighttime. At 7 a.m., they explore the back of the alley, climb up a pile of wooden crates, and enter an open window. I should mention, that Eddie rolled a hundred spot hidden inside of the theater. No, he didn't. And no, no. I did had I actually forgotten wrong? about that. Oh, I hadn't. I know I gotta, you had. I gotta take the notes. I gotta read what I write. Uh, so they look around and eventually make it down to the stage area. And backstage on the floor, they find patterns and shapes drawn in a white powder, probably for a ritual. There is also a lot of debris around, props from the shows, probably, that are stacked in strange ways, and there are no mirrors. Popping back to Abiquiu, Joe actually left through the kitchen. She didn't want to go back in and talk to Sister B anymore. She's walking down the road away from the house and sees a familiar truck. Sam pulls up for one of his usual visits. Joe fills him in on the day, and the strange Russian woman that claims to be Richard's sister. And she act actually asks him if he will go and take care of, get rid of this woman. 
um, that sound, as soon as I say it out loud, it sounds <laughs> Take like Take care of, get rid of, I know. rub she, out. She's a kid. She's just away saying, with. make her go away. <laughs> um, she, she wants her to go away. And uh, Joe, her 86? <laughs> Joe wouldn't know that. Um, Joe wants to walk by her old home. She's just been overtaken by all of these thoughts of, of what she's lost, hearing Sister B just brush off her brother's death. So, so that's where we left it. You know, given Joe's string of unintended consequences throughout the last season, you know, Joe should be careful what she puts out there in the world to happen. Make her go away. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh boy, especially telling Sam to do it. Sam's no murderer. <laughs> this week. <laughs> All right. Um so I guess we could start with Sam or unless anybody else has a uh, yeah. Let's start with Sam. Let's start All with right, Sam. Let's start with Sam. Sam okay. didn't get a lot of time last week. Yeah. Yeah, and we really <clears throat> miss Sam's accents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> let's all find out what's going on with that Russian nun. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to dial back the Sam just a little bit. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> uh, Texas by way of Lithuania. Yeah, there you go. So uh, Sam will go ahead and uh, uh, continue down the road, make his way down to uh, suppose the house there in Abiquiu. Okay. And who's the woman who lives in the house? Uh, they, <laughs> hey, Car- hang on. He'll check his phone. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm sure he can check his phone. <laughs> That's Carly. <laughs> And what's and what's Carly's daughter's name? Stephanie. You wrote it down, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Is it on your palm? Is it like quick reference? <laughs> no, that may rub off. No, it's fine. Gross. So, uh, uh, well, then he'll still be able to check something. That's the. <laughs> so we are heading down to the house and uh... <laughs> keep a while laughing. Uh, we make a we make our way down to the house and uh, I presume uh, uh, I don't see anybody so I'll pull up uh, there get into uh, I don't know if the garage is open or if it's open a bull uh, otherwise I'll just pull up to the front of the house and uh, hop on out okay are you go- are you pulling in the driveway or in the front of the house you know what I'm gonna actually pull up front of the house uh, but a little bit down the road just a twin just a tinge uh, I want I want to walk up to the house. Just a what? Yeah, what, what was that? Just a smidge. <laughs> okay, All right, we'll okay. go with that. I end up uh, before before I leave the car. Uh, All right, so let me write this down. Sam's gonna pull up a tidge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. Nailed it. <laughs> and before I leave, I am gonna make sure I have my my uh, a weapon on me, uh, pistol. And uh, make sure I, I, I'll head on into the house and get up to the front door, and I'll give it a little rap a tap tap. And uh, the door cracks open, and uh, Carly looks at you. Oh, oh, uh, hi, Sam. How are uh, you? How you doing there, Miss Carly? I'm just here uh, uh, checking in, seeing everything's all right. Uh, anyone been around these parts? Uh, uh, just want to see how Joe's doing. Uh, Joe just went out for a quick walk down the street. I bet if you go now, you can still catch her. Oh, I, I appreciate that. You know where she was heading? Uh, she said she wanted to walk into town. And um, yeah, she she didn't leave. In fact, uh, I'm surprised you didn't see her on your way over. Yeah, that's a bit curious. Uh, you know, she's uh, she normally likes going for walks when uh, she's a little flustered. Um, anything got her... Uh, bothered uh, of late you guys getting too little spit oh you you know just just 
typical things, right? Probably the house was feeling a bit small for the day, and uh, she just needed to get out and stretch her legs. Uh huh. And uh, and any anything unusual happened here uh, in the recent days? And uh, any anybody suspicious uh, come about these parts that may have spooked her? Um. Th- we we had a visitor, but uh, I, I don't think it particularly spooked her. I you know I I think uh, she just wanted to get out. Oh, he had a visitor, huh? Well, you, 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 just just for completeness' sake, uh, who who was this visitor? Oh, it was a, a an, an old friend of mine. Uh, she was just cruising through town and stopped by to say hello on her way through. Hmm. I see. Oh, fair. Fair enough. Uh, where, uh, where, where about you, you, you and this friend uh, know each other from? And uh, I, she she turns and she says, "What's that, honey?" Oh, okay. I'll I'll be right there. I, Sam, you'll have to excuse me. I'm I'm sorry. Stephanie needs something, and uh, I, let, let me just give me a minute, and I'll I'll be with you. And she closes the door. And, uh, before she does, I'll say uh, I'll just say uh, and and uh, you go ahead and rush it off. Oh, wow. You do, huh? Uh, and she you catch her, right? Like she gives you a look and <laughs> and then quickly closes the door and locks it. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's say you're, you're uh, going to shoot her. <laughs> Punch I, her in I the throat. I mean, you know, <laughs> Uh, uh, but I will. I will take a look just around the front of the house. Is there any? Um, are there any footsteps? Anything that I can see on the way the egress out? I don't know if it's a. It's a. You know, stones or dirt or what have you out to the curb. Uh, make a spot hidden. Oh, that that would require me uh, making sure I got my dice out, which I was not doing up until just now. Okay, got my dice. Hey, then... hey, Art got some shiny new dice. Uh, that's a twenty. Oh, that's a that's twenty seven. Twenty seven. So that's gonna be a regular success. Uh regular success. No, nothing. I mean, you know, nothing. Unless besides. I burn some luck. Should I burn some luck on this? Maybe I'll burn some luck on this. No, I won't burn any luck. That's fine. Run it run a little low on the luck already? Not yet. Not yet, but I may need it uh based on uh, how these conversations have been going. Yeah. And if he burns twenty points of luck, that that'd probably be significant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you know, nothing I mean, there's plenty of footsteps, right? Uh yep. Joe's the post persons. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Be interesting. Nothing and, I'll, so. and and I'll just uh, uh on my way off, uh, I'll just take a look. Are there windows on the front of the house? Yeah. And on my way, I'll just kind of make sure I'm keeping an eye on them. Do I see say the curtains pulled back? Anybody watching from them? Uh nobody's watching you and the curtains are pulled too. But that's uh for you, that's nothing unusual. Yeah, for this house, sure. Yeah. And um and then uh, the side entrance of the house, like the kitchen entrance, um, mm-hmm. is that is that as opposed to the uh, uh, whichever direction that is? That's near the garage. From right, it's the, the driveway is to the left of the house. Right. I'll just I'll just uh, make, take a couple of steps in that direction and just kind of take a look down that side of the house. Yeah, and uh, you don't see anything going on over there. Say uh huh, uh huh. So I'll walk over to the front of the house and I'll just yell on my way off. So, all right there, Kyle. I'll be on my way. I'll see how Joe's doing. But you know how to reach me if you have any problems here, anything troubling you. Uh, and she and and the front door cracks back open, and she says, "I I'm so sorry to keep you waiting, Sam. Uh, Stephanie's just been having these terrible nightmares, and they anyway. Um, I I it was nice of you to stop by, and um." Uh, do catch up with Joe and uh, let her know I'll have dinner ready tonight. Oh, very well. That sounds uh, that sounds wonderful. T- tell her we're gonna have fried chicken. Oh, great! And you know what? I forgot. I forgot. Now, so I got something for you in the truck. Uh, just stay right there, Carly, and I'll just uh, I'll head out onto the truck, and I'm gonna grab a, a little package I got and bring it over to her. And it's got a couple of uh, steaks that I brought from uh, the ranch. Uh, so these are these are fresh. They may still wiggle for you, and I'll uh, give them over to her. And I'll say, oh, and this she is... said, 
she says, oh, this this looks wonderful. You know what? In, instead of that, then uh, maybe we'll have steak tonight. Uh, please, please do let Joe know that uh, to come on back home when she gets a chance. Oh, we'll do. We'll do. You tell me how you like that wagon and meat. It is the uh, it is the uh, it is the best you could <laughs> you can have. Can pass that one up. <laughs> no, it's, it was intentional. <sighs> Freezing. Uh, it's a phrasing issue. It was intentional. Apologies to any sensible ears out there. Um, and so I'll, uh, I'll pass off my my steaks and uh, my package and head back <laughs> out <laughs> to the Twice? road. <laughs> head out back. On, one the, more. Head out back to the road. And, and she shouts out. She goes, "Wow, this one's awfully small." <laughs> uh, uh, and I say. <laughs> you cut him thin up there, don't you? Yeah, we do. We do. We do. But it's filling. It's filling. <laughs> and I'll uh, say you enjoy you enjoy that little little uh, little little load there. And I'll head on up down the road oh, to my car and I hop on into it. And I'll head back over to. Presumably... After all that, you're gonna go hang out with the teenage girl, really? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> this is. And I hop into the car. And no, I'm apparently not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go meander about town for 20 minutes. Uh, no, I'll I'll head I'll head over to. Uh, she said she was going to her her parents' house. And if I don't know where that is, I guess I would go in that general direction that I saw her walking. I mean, it sounds um, like you weren't at Carly's for too long. You can probably still see. I probably I probably catch you. Uh, so I pull up, and I say, "Oh man, Joe." Something fish is going on. I showed up there, and uh, there was no ruski, uh, but there uh, there was a bit of a spook there, Carla, and uh, she uh, what? she she seemed to be guarding a bit. Uh, I mean, uh, she is very secretive, but it's yeah. weird that she wouldn't have told you. It is a bit odd. It is a bit odd. Um, but I, I am a little worried. There may be more to the store than she's letting on. I mean, you um, believe me, right? That there was a Russian woman. I believe you. She admitted that there was a friend of hers, but she uh, seemed to uh, get a bit preoccupied when I dug in a deeper. They so, weren't uh, friends. They weren't friends. Oh, boy. Well, Carla's now on my shit list. Carly faded. Uh, huh. Yeah, I think there's a bit of tension there we're going to need to have to figure out. Uh, she did invite you. She said having dinner tonight. Uh, I brought over some steaks, so uh, maybe I'll accompany you for a little bit and come back and see if uh, that that ruski's back by the time uh, dinner's ready. Sure. Supper, as I it mean, were. I was just, I was actually going to go look at my old house. Oh. You're welcome to come. It probably won't look like much to you. I mean, it's no ranch. But yeah, I just, but, I don't know. But, I've just been thinking about about oh. my family and hearing sis her her name was Bielo Pushkin. Pushkin. Hearing this this sister, this nun talk about Richard, her brother, and not even believe he was dead. It was just weird. Mm. I don't know. I just wanted to walk by the house. She didn't think Richard was dead. Yeah, that is odd. Uh because uh to tell you what, that 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 man was gone. Uh, did she she think that was an act, a ruse, a red herring? She says she thinks they switched him with a, someone or something else after the abduction. Hmm. Interesting. Well, uh, that seems far-fetched. I'll be honest with you there, Joe. He's dead. Well, unless he's... We unless he saw. Yeah. Unless he's got a twin, or they they got a lookalike, uh, some sort of double, uh, I don't know. But uh, why don't we head on over to your parents' house? We can we can dig into these uh, Russians a bit more, and then uh, see what's going on there. I haven't been back. I don't know if someone else lives there. I we we can just. You haven't been back since the incident. No. Hmm. This was my first time back in Abiquiu. And I, you know, I've been here for a month, but I just didn't want to go to the house because I didn't know. I don't know. Today, maybe we could just walk by, just park by it and walk by. Just like, I don't want to scare anyone, but I just want to be able to look. 
Sure, sure. So uh, do you want to hop in and I'll take the rest of the way? I'll walk with you, sure. whichever you prefer. Yeah, okay. Hop in and I don't know how much further. I'm presuming it's not the huge town. Just a couple so minutes. A couple Small minutes town. up the road, yeah. yeah. So we'll pull up. But I'm going to pull up again about a house or two down the road. I don't want, say, the house, uh, the, the license plate to be immediately visible in case, you know, uh, I'm just a little cautious. So we'll hop on out. We can walk up uh, to the front of the house. And do we see anything, uh, Keeper, as we're walking up? Well, I don't want to walk up to the house. I just want to walk down the road and... Past it, I mean, sure. like, if there are lights inside, I don't want to scare anyone. And I really don't want to say why I'm there. I just, I mean, I don't want to tell new owners... Mm -hmm. Do we see any lights in the windows, Keeper? <laughs> <laughs> we have not walked up to the door. <laughs> can, I, can I talk? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> so as you, as you approach the house, uh, New, Mexico, New Mexico is very arid, right? And so the air is very, uh, there's, there's not a lot of moisture for things to mold. And so you see all these basically preserved flowers, dried flowers all over the front of the house where it looks like people have kind of made memorials to your parents um, in terms of uh, uh, they've been left and they've kind of dehydrated in the sun and um, uh, most of them, but they're, they're everywhere. And uh, the house looks very unoccupied because these things cover the sidewalks up into the house and on the doorsteps and, and things like that. Uh, there are, however, a few that are, are still fresh. It looks like some people maybe uh, have left flowers within the last few days. And um, there's, there is a for sale sign in the front yard. Um, but obviously uh, there's really been no interaction and probably the publicity slash ongoing um, monuments being left uh, are preventing any kind of sales from moving forward with it. Mm -hmm. So looking at this, I'll turn to you, Joe, and I'll say, you want to go any further? I can't believe people are still thinking about them. How, how long ago was that, Joe? It's been six years. Six years, and they're still leaving flowers? Um, you mind if I walk up and just take a look at those flowers? I don't mind. I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna go in. All right, all right. So I'll walk, I'll walk up with you, I guess, through the front door, or to the front door, and on the way, I want to take a look at sort of some of these flowers there, keep up. Does any have a card? Or are they just the flowers themselves? Any notes attached to any of them? Uh, the, there are. There's, but a lot of them are faded and um, pretty, pretty dry. Um, it, it looks like at one point, um, you know, it, somebody probably tried to to clean up for a while, but that they just kept getting mm -hmm. left there in such quantities that you couldn't keep up. Uh, can Joe? Can you make a luck roll? Uh, that's got to be pretty good. Yep. Uh, 27 out of 41. Okay. And as y'all are walking up to the house, a, a car pulls up to the curb and um, a, a really kind of uh, sweaty man, he's uh, clean shaven and bald, probably in his late forties, early fifties, uh, in a suit gets out. And, uh, I, I mean, he's just sweating profusely and, and he, he, he jumps out of the car and he says, I, I, excuse me, excuse me. I, uh, uh, this, this is private property. You can't be on it. It's, uh, hold on, Joe. We were looking at this house. We see it's for sale. Are you a proprietor of this establishment? Uh, I I am not. I am the attorney of the family, and um, uh, you could contact the realtor in charge on mm. the sign. Uh, there's uh, nobody should be on the property without the proper listing agent. What about the family? Are the family allowed to be here? 
and um, he he takes pause as you say that, and and he looks keenly at Joe, and he says, "What? What? Joe is is that you?" Yes, I presume I would know this person's name. You you wouldn't because you would have oh. been really young and um maybe you would have met him but uh eleven yeah and well uh, I guess so um I don't sure uh, roll to see if you roll to see okay, if you sure. know him sure sure uh well I rolled an eighty eight okay yeah so let's just say you don't remember him uh, and, and he walks up to you and he very kind of quickly and like extends his uh fairly meaty and sweaty palm and he says uh maximilian colby I, I i had heard that you were in town and uh i've been i've been trying to locate you for years is it really you joe uh, when he called me by name i probably would have shied away because i have been for so many years hiding my identity fearing that the, the whole town was after me yeah um, so i kind of just don't know what to say uh, why, why do you want to find her? Uh, well, well, if you, you indeed are, are Joe, uh, I, I've been looking for her because I, you know, she's the rightful heir to all of her parents' property and you sure look like her. I, I, sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm scaring you. I, I just. I've been looking for you for so long. Wow. Um, okay. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm Joe. I'm Joe. I'm sorry. I just, it's been so long since I've been here and you know me and I don't know you and, but my God, child, it's so good to see you and, and, and welcome back. And he's just like, just like, sweating i mean it's just kind of gross like the collar's soaking wet and um he, he's kind of red-faced both from the heat and the excitement of seeing you um and mr, and, mr. colby uh you're perspiring quite a bit there uh is the energy is there electricity there inside of the house can we can we go inside and maybe have a little bit of a, a sit and catch up uh, where you can cool off a bit i don't want you to get yourself any more winded than y'all Sure, and he uh, he takes off his hat, and uh, un underneath his hat is just kind of like a pale scalp. You know, it's just um, see him perspiring. He said, uh, and, "And I'm sorry, I didn't didn't quite have the pleasure of uh, making your acquaintance, sir." Oh, the name's Sam, and I'll give him a, a firm, uh, meaty handshake. Okay, and and so you just notice how kind of wet and. Uh, perspiry his hand is yeah i'll quickly take out a handkerchief and uh, sort of dry my hand off in a not too inconspicuous manner okay he says i i am sorry he goes uh, this heat you know sometimes it just doesn't agree with me so well i uh, my apologies uh and uh how do you know joe uh, you know, uh, she she uh, helped her out of a tough bind at one point, and uh, I just decided I'd help look after her. Seemed like a wayward youth, reminded me of my own son, and uh, seemed like she could use a, a little uh, not wayward little <laughs> so so someone just uh, uh, making sure uh, uh, she she's doing all right. That's I all. was in Ab I was in I was in Los Alamos for a long time, and I met Sam there. He lives there. And and so he says, uh, he says, and with all due respect, Mister, uh, I'm I'm sorry, uh, I didn't catch your last name. Uh, it's because I didn't give it there, Maximilian. Uh, what business is it, sir, of yours? Uh, none at all. If it, it, if you don't want to give it, but uh, some of the stuff I need to go over with Joe are private family affairs, and uh, it would be my obligation to go over them with her in private. Well, I'd leave that up to her. Uh, certainly welcome to. I, I do not uh, need to be there unless she uh, would like me to be for a bit of uh, outside objective and, counseling. And he says, and and I, I do agree. It's quite hot. He goes, I, I tell you what. He goes, Joe, here's my card. 
uh, come down to my office anytime. Uh, you, you don't even need to make an appointment. I'll always make time for you. And uh, do you still have a key to the house? No. Okay. And uh, he, he says, hold on. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I have one for you somewhere here. And um, he goes back to his car and he digs around and uh, he comes up with a key and he says, uh, here, I... I mean, it's yours. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been trying to sell it in order to put some in a fund for you, but you can decide if you want to do that. And here's a key. And uh, uh, just come see me at my office sometime soon. It's it's great to see you, Joe. It really is. Uh, OK, I'll take the key, but I just look kind of like shell shocked and sure. um, sort of spacey because as soon as he asked if I had a key, I just immediately started picturing running out of the house the last time I was there. And I don't have a key because I took nothing with me. Okay. And he takes a, he takes a handkerchief out of his back. He wipes his head and mm -hmm. uh, he's just kind of wiping his face and stuff. And he puts it back. And uh, is there, is there anything else I can do for you right now? No, this is unexpected. I will. I'll keep your card. All right. And and I just want to confirm here, uh, Mr. Colby, are you a lawyer, a real estate proprietor? Uh, how'd you know the family? Oh, well, uh, not sure I'm obligated to disclose that to you, but I, I did represent the family and, and I still represent Joe's interests. Oh, very well. Very well. Well, a uh, pleasure to meet you there, sir. Uh, you have yourself a love to drop back. You, you too, Mr. Sam. And, uh, don't mean to be abrupt with you, but uh, in order to keep my client's best counsel, I feel that until I know the relationship here better, I have to protect her interests. Oh, of course. In fact, I respect that quite a bit. Uh, very nice to meet you there. And so uh, he he puts his hat back on. He looks at you, Joe, and he tips it and he says, I'd give you a big hug. Uh, it's so good to see you, but uh, you probably don't want one from a sweaty man like me. And he heads back to his car. Uh, so gross. <laughs> real, real gross uh two things keeper when he gets back in i just when he was shuffling in initially for the key and now i was just keeping an eye on sort of like what was inside of his car as he was doing that did it look uh what's the make it like is it a high-end car and and the there's a clutter inside does it look pretty well put together and then when he drives away i'm going to make note of the license plate that's all sure so the uh the car itself is uh quite new and uh, I, I don't know how many high end features they had back in the 40s, but, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly, um, you know, it, there's no damage to it. Nothing to make it look like it's uh, in it has wear to it um, inside uh, as he opened the door. Um, there were like kind of boxes of envelopes. And though it seemed like to be a lot of information, um, it was all well organized. And as he moved through it, uh, there, there was some kind of certainty to his actions. Okay. Got it. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that, that's helpful. And then as he drives away, I'll keep note of his uh, license plate and then we'll turn on in and I'll say, uh, Joe, are uh, you ready to head on in? Ah, so they really don't hate me here. No, seems like they were looking for you and that you got to, you, uh, people care about you there, Joe. Wow. Yeah. Let's go in. And you know what? I keeper, I'm going to actually make sure I grab my, I'm going to go back out to the car. I'm going to make sure I grab my shotgun, uh, just in case as we go back Sam. to the house. Subtle. Why? So, Joe, something odd happened to your folks. Uh, no one's been in this house. And uh, just in case, I'll make sure. Uh, just call me superstitious, but uh, I hear there's been a murder. No one's been inside. I'm going to keep an eye out. We never kept guns in the house. Well, Don't that's... say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. If you were superstitious, wouldn't you want like a rabbit's foot? <laughs> Cross. Some garlic. Wait, what was he going to say? I don't know what he was going to say. I don't know what he was going to say either. <laughs> no. He was going to... No, I'm not going to say it. I'm no, not gonna what? Say it I want to know. Dig your own hole there, yep. Sam. 
Hey, hey, Rick, what, what we're saying, I'm going to say. I don't even know. So uh, he'll, he'll say, he'll say, do you not want me to, do you not want me to bring this in there, Joe? It's, I don't. Mm. All right. Well, I'll take the ammo out of it, Keeper. But if there's something on the porch that I can sort of lift up a board or hide it under just there on the front porch, I would do that And uh, as we go inside. Okay. Um, so... But I do have my pistol concealed on me for what it's worth. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, so, Joe, you put the... Um, uh, the you're going to have to roll a lot here. No oh boy. I'm ready. Uh, so you put the key in the door and, uh, make your first sand roll. Oh God. Okay. I made it regular success. Okay. And so uh, as you put the key in the door, right, the hairs on the back of your neck, just kind of stand up and you get a slight chill, um, as you, as you put the key in the door and start to, uh, uh, mm -hmm. turn the lock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I turn the lock. Yeah. And, and, and I open the door. Yeah, and so as you as you open the door, there's um you know kind of this immediate rush of everything you thought of that night and are are all your memories of that night and you being taken out the door um carried in the officer's arms. Um there's an ever so slight smell of of home right that that just kind of rests vaguely um or or, or wisps of it kind of are in the air um it's not musty it's not moldy um somebody's obviously like the first thing you notice would probably be your trepidation of like what the insides of the house look like but it's all put back together and um, it's not super dusty. It looks like somebody's at least gone in and taken care of it. Are there still blood streaks on the walls or has there been significant cleaning done? Yeah, there's no blood streaks on the walls. Um, and so from from what you can see, right, that um, it, it all looks from where you're standing, it all looks gone. And, okay. and things look put back together, right? There was broken stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. Things were a mess. So, Sam, I'm going to go to my room. It was down this hall. You're welcome to walk around if you want, or you can come with me. Sure. Uh, I, I'll give you a moment of time there, Joe, to uh, uh, reflect. I'm sure this is incredibly hard. You tell me if you need me and uh, if you need to leave, and I'll just uh, be a mosey in here through maybe the uh living room and seeing uh what's what everything just looks so clean now it's like nothing happened it's really weird and so as you go down the hall towards your room um it, you start to get really uneasy right you pass by your open the the open door to your parents room and and you just you're not ready to even look in there yet. And so you head towards your room when you get there. Um, it's, it's unsettling in the fact that there's no bl blood or anything like that, but the bed's been stripped and all that is, is like a, a fitted sheet over the mattress. Um, and all of the things that, you at least remember from that night that had blood on them have been removed. And I think with that, you got to make one more roll for me. This is San again. Yeah. Uh, so just so that uh. I can uh, like picture this in my head. Uh, there are items that are missing from the room that in her recollection were covered with blood. Is, is that what R you were saying? Right. Like the, like the comforter to her bed is missing okay. and like mm. the pillows gone, um, nothing and anything that was, would have been broken kind of in the process. So interesting. Okay. What, what happened to you? We can't hear you. You can't hear me? No, okay, we now we can. Oh, okay. weird. Weird. Okay. 
I'm going to just turn up the sensitivity on this a little bit. Okay, sorry. I was so I actually trying to joke about moving on and not mention my 92 that I rolled and see if you just forget. Oh my gosh, perfect. This is so yeah, good. It's only 92, but yeah. You know. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 92 is the same as an 88 or 78. Yeah. All right. Uh, you take three three points of damage there as uh, sanity. You, you, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. As you remember, uh, you you almost see from your vantage point of standing the doorway, imagining yourself under the bed and huddled under there. And this is, I mean, this is like really intense exposure to the space that you were in, and uh, you know the tension's been mounting the whole way through the house. And uh, you you start to tremble and shake in the doorway, uh, and you find yourself just kind of involuntarily stepping backwards, and uh, maybe even starting to feel a bit nauseous. Okay, well then I'll just step back until my back hits the other side of the hallway and just slide down and sit okay. on the floor, looking into the door. I want to go in, but I can't. I presume I may see this if I'm sort of just meandering through the living room and walking around. Uh, if you followed her, then yes. But if you didn't, then no. I'm just, just I'm I'm just free walking throughout. Okay. And so, uh, what are you doing as you walk around? Uh, I mean, I'm just taking a look and inventory. Really, um, does anything seem particularly unusual, out of place? It just sort of seems like a house that's been cleaned up and stripped. Yeah, it, it, if anything, it just seems like all kind of art, personal artifacts have been removed out of the house. So um, what you're noticing, Sam, is kind of the lack of uh, a personal touch, so to speak, in the house at this point. Um, yeah, it's very sterile and barren. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of functional items that just kind of serve to fill in the space. Yeah, well, as I'm going along, if I'm not hearing anything from Joe, uh, where's the uh, basement off of? Uh, so that was, yeah, it, you would see the basement stairs would kind of be off the back of the kitchen. Perfect. Uh, so are, is that door open? Is it closed? Uh, you, you would find it pretty easily. It's not a, it's not a massive house by any stretch. So if you're, if you're kind of poking around, um, you know, the pantry would be emptied. Um, there might be a canned good or two lingering around and then right across from there's a door down to the basement. And do the lights work? Actually, that was the another question I had. Yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll go to the the uh, ba uh, basement door, and I think from Joe's prior memory, which I would not know, but there was a switch near there that would light up the downstairs. I don't remember, but if there was, I would hit that and see if there's any lights that would light up the downstairs. You. Having a little well, trouble with you there, yep. Keeper. Michael, you just got super janky. Um, um, yep, 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 you're not <laughs> quite back yet. <laughs> I'm glad oh, that wasn't just me. Do? No, no. Uh oh. Do we want to? Do we want to take a break? Is it a good time here? to take a break. Yes, yeah, this is the yeah, perfect yeah. time to take a break. Uh, we just lost <laughs> Michael, so we, we will. We will. Oh take my God. Him. It Good was the same. You killed someone else. Yeah. It was the basement. It was the basement. It was the basement. It was the, the basement. basement. <laughs> Got our keeper. All right. We'll, we'll take a short break and we'll see everybody on the other side. We are back from break. Michael, back to you. Okay. I think I broke up with y'all right as Sam had flipped the light switch to the basement. Wait, Is that, that, right? that got much more serious than I thought. You didn't see we were breaking <laughs> up. Yeah. I, I don't like pineapple. Mm. Um, all right, Rick. Did you did you flip the you you had just flipped the light switch? I flipped to the, basement. the light switch. Yes. Um, okay. So we've got the basement lights on, and they flicker on. Uh, and as you look down there, right, uh, basement uh, dirt floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I'm gonna make sure if I did not if I did not grab if I do not have a flashlight on me, I'm gonna grab one out of the truck for what it's worth before I head you down. You're going all the way back. You turn on the basement light, and you're going all really. You're going all the way back out to the. Truck nah, that's the I guess. I guess that's that's not Sam. Sam wouldn't do that. You're right. Uh, if I okay. don't have one on me, fuck, I'm going straight down. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right, and uh, you get down there, and uh, it's a basement. Uh, 
do you know what happened here? Does Sam know what happened? I don't know. You uh, tell me, Joe. Did you tell me over the last two weeks? We no. I think we actually. I told you. Oh what? no! I told Bello. Mm -hmm. Did I tell Sam? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I, I don't think in in right. We're talking game. about over the four weeks that transpired. Why don't you mm. make? Would your care? Do you think your character would have? Do you want to make a luck roll? I mean, if Sam's coming back every week showing care and awareness of what's going on at the house. He would also know that I was afraid of going back. Yeah, I think I would have told him. Okay, so at least get... like the broad strokes. So Sam, you get the, as you kind of head down, you get the, you get the heebie-jeebies, right? Like of kind of whatever's going on. Okay. I mean, Sam's seen a lot. He doesn't, he's, I mean, he's pretty strong willed. I mean, he'll just say, he'll just say as I'm going down, Joe, you doing all right up there? That's not the accent. Let me just, boop. Oh. Uh, Joe, you, you, uh, <clears throat> Joe, Joe, Joe. So Joe. much better. Oh my God. <clears throat> Joe, are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Keep trying. Oh. You're almost there. You're almost, you got I'm it. I'm, I'm, You're getting I'm it. it You're going to get it. Hold on. Uh, no. Join our Patreon and Rick will record <laughs> your phone message this week with that voice. Jo uh, Joe, two cent level. Uh, 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 Joe, uh, Joe, are you doing all right up there? Nailed it. <laughs> Did you throw up a little bit on that last one? <laughs> Despite the frivolity, all you would hear would be a little stifled sob. Oh, I don't know if you'd even hear that. You're kind of you are. I mean, the house isn't that big, but I don't know if you'd hear her okay. sobbing. Okay. And I, and I would just say, let's say, well, I'm headed. I'm going to check out this basement. Want to make sure it's uh it's uh, all been cleaned out there. Uh, I'm just going to head on down, and I'll and I'll proceed on down. Okay. And uh, I, I, again, as you do, right, you go down the stairs and um, there's the, there's no kind of musty odor, right? These are fairly dry areas, not prone to a lot of moisture. And uh, the air is cooler. It is like below ground and kind of is the cool air of the basement uh, hits your face. You're just you're just struck with the unease of imagining what probably was down here at one point. Yeah. Yeah, and it's otherwise fairly cleaned out. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll there's, just sort of, there, there's a few canning uh, jars and things on shelves, but uh, as some you know, kind of handmade wooden shelves uh, set into one side, but nothing else really. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and, it, uh, yep. it does uh, make a spot hidden. Forty-one, a regular success. Yeah, uh, you do notice that there's uh, about a quarter inch of dirt that's been removed in a square area that's probably about seven feet by seven feet. And if and I'll and I'll walk uh, up to it a little bit, and I'll take a look and kneel down. Does it look like it's been taken out in one chunk? Or sort of dug up in sequential bats. Uh, well, Sam would know, like with a flat blade shovel. Okay, so sequential bats. It's not like yeah. it was uh, uh lifted out and uh, intact, I suppose. Oh, uh, no, no, no like no. like somebody was trying to preserve, like the. No, it just it yeah. just uh, for lack of a better. Got it. Yeah, yeah. It looks like somebody wanted to just get rid of the bloody dirt. Yep, no, that makes sense. Um, so so fair, fair, fair. Uh, so I'll just uh, I'll do that. I'll just sort of take a moment, a beat, so to speak, and uh, look around. Anything else in there? Um, and I'll just sort of say out loud, uh, sort of under my breath, I'll just mutter, S uh, uh, it's such a shame. What a waste. And, uh, you know, I hope you found peace and uh, sort of uh, staying back up and start to slowly make my way out. Okay. And uh, so as you get to the top of the stairs, you'll uh, click the lights and uh, close the basement door, I assume. Yes. 
Okay. And then uh, we'll take that opportunity. We'll cut from there kind of as the lights go down and uh, with Joe in the hallway. And we'll cut over to the theater where uh, Buddy and Eddie are um, currently investigating. So I think the last time when we left off, um, we were both standing around the... uh, um, that odd white powder that was on the uh, um, that was on the stage, mm-hmm. and in, in a design in a pattern. Yeah, someone was doing cocaine art. Yeah, I had... no. It's like it's like giant kind of. There's a geometric circle with um, you know all kinds of lines drawn in between it. That not like not kind of your stereotypical pentagrams, but just different kind of geometric lines and then that circle intersects another circle um so there's kind of some intricate design work going on all around the stage okay and i had i was drawing these designs um on my notepad Mm -hmm. and then what were you doing eddie i i'd taken photos of it okay okay um so then i guess we would sort of walk or at least a buddy would walk around it to maybe the other side of the stage um and you know sort of look out into the audience area okay and as buddy does this and looks out across the seats he just kind of has a moment where he's envisioning this crowd cheering for him just kind of one of those like childish (laughs) fantasies about right like being the star in the center of attention for for a moment Mm -hmm. um and then and then go ahead with what you were going to say okay yeah really quickly does eddie notice this sort of look in his eyes yeah so buddy Uh, in that moment buddy would stop and you know just sort of wide-eyed look out yeah uh you're you're taking photos and probably the the strobe on the the camera bulb going off uh probably uh, is what's heightening buddy's fantasy just a little bit mm-hmm. so i'm gonna I'll, I'll say that uh you can make a spot hidden to see if you notice sure yeah i got it okay so sure you notice yep so as soon as i see this i'm like i'm like sort of lowering the camera a bit and i'm like introducing buddy the magnificent Nobody has seen anything like this in the history of drama, in the history of theater. This is the most magnificent thing you've ever seen in your life. And he's going to start clapping. Buddy, buddy. Oh, uh, come on, Sir Eddie, cut it out. That's my man. He's doing it all. He's, he's making it great. He's blushing and, and we'll sort of turn and walk away. Like, continue. Uh, uh, All right. Along the, I'm so sort of envisioning your, along the back of the stage to the other side. Okay. You got your drawings done. I got my photos done. We still got to find this lady, right? Yeah. Hopefully yeah. Hopefully she's not drunk. Oh, I hope not. It's kind of early in the day for that. Yeah. If we go by Lonnie, she's never sober. So maybe we should go check the front of the theater. Look if there's anywhere behind. I can't imagine she's sleeping. If we, I'm yelling like that through the theater. I'm trying to give her, and I'm going to cut my hands and yell, give her a chance to come out and have a conversation with us. So are and there... That, and that just kind of echoes through the darkness of the theater, right? Because, I mean, all y'all have are your flashlights. There, yep. There's no light coming into the theater. Yeah. Um, are, are there... So I would now be um, backstage on the other side of the stage. Okay. Um, are, are there doors leading off that direction too? So if you remember, there was a set of stairs that came, the the, the hallway that y'all came from the upstairs where the dressing rooms were, there's mm-hmm. stairs that came down both sides. So there's that set of stairs that goes kind of back up to the top. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's an opposite set of stairs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Sir Eddie, there, there's stairs over here too. Yeah. Uh didn't we see that they were just two sets of stairs coming from the same place? You want to go check them out? Oh, okay. So wait, I, I'm, I'm trying to picture this. So there, there was a there was a hallway, and at each end there were stairs that came down. Is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. 
And then if you'll remember, like if we go back to season two, there were doors that were locked on the sides. Right. And that's that's essentially access from the theater to stage left and stage right. Okay. Uh, if um, mm-hmm. Casper had kind of these bodyguards at those doors on mm-hmm. either side of the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and those those essentially just get you right to the side of the stage. OK. Um Okay, and there's no other doors there. Uh, so then I guess Buddy would probably go down. Theater. Yeah, he would go down um, to the into the the seating seating area. Okay. And what I'm thinking is like if I'm assuming that it's a pretty typical theater where there's sort of two lanes and then three groups of seats, right? So you can sort of be walking up either set of lanes uh smaller theater so there's just one just main one center set, yeah one center and then aisles on either side of the seats okay so okay um so i was picturing that we came in stage right and that buddy just walked behind the stage to stage left and is now exiting the front of the stage stage left okay does sure. that fit with yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So yep. then um Buddy's gonna walk slowly up that aisle um on the left side going up um uh, with you okay. know flashlight sort of you know doing the kind of peek in the seat yep. in between. As seats. He's doing that, I'm sort of behind and I'm scanning behind us. So I'm trusting Buddy's got point and I'm I'm guarding the rear. Okay. And I, um, I remind uh something that happened last season that we yeah. all know. Yeah that there was purple mist coming out of the baseboards on the sides of the theater but there these characters wouldn't know that right i'm just oh yeah the players of something they would have known how's it how's it smell in here uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's um eddie uh as your like roses as uh, once buddy jumps off the stage um and you're kind of shining your light out uh, after him Um, You feel something, uh, it it feels like something goes up your pants leg. Jesus. (laughs) So as soon as that happens, I am jumping up and down and I'm, I'm positive it's a rat and I'm jumping up and down and I'm smacking at my legs and I will jump down off the stage if I have to. And if I still feel anything in there, I'm taking my pants off. Okay. So, um, as you hit at it and go to jump off, it goes from you feel it on your calf and then you feel it move up the back of your thigh. Okay, pants coming off. Okay. I, I hate pants that. coming off, and I am screaming, Buddy, it's going to get me. It's going to, it's a rat. It's going to bite me in the balls. Okay. okay, Buddy is obviously spinning around and shining the flashlight. Okay, and can. Uh, I, I, I need you to can, make some sort. Can we have a luck roll to see if he was wearing uh, anything under his pants? Uh, is well, that a I luck roll for me? Do I have to roll for blindness? Roll. I'm just telling you pure G string. So that's all you got to know. Oh, Jesus. Uh, is Eddie boxer or briefs? It's important. <laughs> pure boxes. He's- oh, no, you're a, you're a tidy whitey guy. Come on. G string boxers. Boxers. Okay. Wait, did you say um, G string? Do, do you know what boxers are? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a boxer but then he pulls it all the way up <laughs> he gives himself a wedgie every day <laughs> all right, Super I, need, weird. I need Eddie to make some sort of dexterous uh, role for this jumping off the stage and pulling <clears throat> your pants down yeah I got it I got actually I, got, I rolled a two. Oh my god okay wow so so you jump down off the stage, buddy. You're kind of shining this spotlight on him from across the theater. It's almost, buddy, for you a little bit humorous, right? Because um, uh, uh, with your thinking about the theater, you're shining on him like a spotlight. Um, but Eddie's in real panic, right? As he jumps off the stage, he he flings off his pants. Um, he's a, as you're flinging off your pants. Um, you feel something, it goes right up the back of your leg and across your buttocks, and then oh, um, the feeling's like gone altogether. What the oh. hell's going on? And I'm 
I've got like my pants all the way down. I've got my boxers pulled down and I'm like, buddy, look at my ass. What was on my ass? It's I don't feel it, but where did it go? So Buddy's doing the like hand over the eyes, like not wanting to look, but like okay. kind of half looking. Um, is there anything on his ass? Um, I nothing that you can see. Okay, did, what what do you, sir? Sir, any, why put your pants back on? What what are you doing? And I'm slapping, I'm slapping (laughs) back there. (laughs) I'm like smacking all around. I'm like, what the hell just happened? Eddie, sir, are you are you feeling okay? Are you having a fit? No, I'm not feeling okay. A rat just went on my ass and disappeared. I don't even know what the hell just happened. What what are you talking about, sir? There's no rat. Yeah, was. I don't know where it went, but it disappeared. But it was on me. I swear to God. But rat rats don't disappear. Well, this one, I don't know what in them like. I'm like standing up and I'm looking around and I'm looking on the ground. Eddie, sir, cover and up. I'm going to start pulling my. Actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take off my underwear and look at my underwear with my light and see if there's anything I can see on the underwear. Okay. Make a sand roll. Yeah, I got it. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how well did you get it? I got a seven. What? A seven? <laughs> You need a new dice rolling program. All right. Uh, yeah. I also got a hundred, so let's not pretend otherwise. Yeah. Well, I mean, why else are you in this scenario? All right. Um, okay. So you're uh, you're just kind of panicking. I, you keep looking at the back of your legs and stuff, and and shining. I would presume a light on the stage as well, um, as you do. Yeah. So Buddy's kind of looking around. Uh, you know, like shining the light around in case there okay. actually was a rat that would have run away. Okay. Uh, you know, trying to catch it in the light. Okay. I assume nothing. Nothing. Okay. And nothing in the underwear, nothing in the pants. Like I'm searching <laughs> it all. There's nothing there. No. Yeah. No, there was very I, little in the underwear. I'm sorry, sir. I'm getting, I'm getting dressed again. And I'm like, oh, what the hell's going on with this place? I, we got to find this lady and we got to get out of here. This place is no good. So get the pants on, get everything buckled up. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm just obviously a little bit disconcerted, but I'm like, I'm going up front. If I find her, she's going to, she's going to get the backside of my fucking tongue on this because this place is ridiculous. And I'm just storming out. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. What, what yes, backside of my tongue, the backside of your tongue. Like the membranous, venous, bulbousy backside, the backside of, of my tongue. Just, just wanted to establish this. The backside of my tongue. Wouldn't that be the underside? Backside of my tongue. Get out of here. Just. I, that... I don't. I don't think I gave a content warning for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted. So as, um, like Eddie... that's your throat. It's your backside <laughs> of your. I don't even understand. Go, go ahead. Somebody else go. Go. <laughs> can't get over this uh as eddie is putting his pants back on is this the moment when buddy smells a faint hint of residual shit from this theater (laughs) (laughs) and falsely puts two and two together yes it actually is i just <laughs> rolled i just rolled a hundred for you yes holy shit a hundred that's great um, like, all right yep so but he's, a nice but he's, guy, he's not judging he he's not Eddie judging himself nope not judging but it's in there it's in the back of his head that's great it's in the back of his head that's yeah. great all right so you've booked toward i'm, I'm going straight the door. out and i'm like you better get out here where where are you going? I'm going out to the front of the theater. I'm looking for Lana. Oh, okay. And I'm like, Lana, we got to talk to you. This is ridiculous. I know what the hell you're sleeping in this creepy ass theater for, but we got to keep on with this investigation. And I'm hoping you can help us, Lana. No, nothing. No response. Uh, when you get to the front of the theater, re- remember there's a bathroom on either side. Sure. And then... Kicking the, in and, the theater, the bathroom doors, looking in there. Okay, and they're uh, they're empty, and then 
Um, you know, there's two stairwells that again go up to the second floor of the theater. Sure. Uh, so I'll, I'll say, all right, buddy, you take you take the left. So, but right, buddy's right. still. I have not followed you like exactly out. So, buddy's still back to he's as you took off he's still kind of looking around for a rat and then continuing his his like search up the theater looking in between all the rows of seats and now looking actually a little bit closer because you know it, he doesn't want to think that Eddie is completely insane so he's hopeful that there actually was a rat so he's trying to find it because hey, not this- finding the rat is like okay Eddie kind of smelled a little shitty and might be a little crazy. So he's really trying to to not think that. So he really would like to find this rat. Make a spot hidden roll. Okay. First roll with the new dice. Oh, yeah. Here we go. It's a fail. Okay. Uh, and as you... It may not be you... the dice. <laughs> As you flick the light between the seats, uh, yeah. you think you see a shadow, and you, okay. you follow that shadow. You keep trying to catch it. Uh, you never quite see it, but you're you're pretty certain at that point it settles you. You're like, oh, okay, there was a rat. Okay. Uh, okay. And and so you see it and think, ah, that, I'm sure that's what it was. You're able okay. to kind of settle yourself. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll sort of finish the once I'm convinced that I've lost the rat. Uh, I'll continue, uh, you know, through the back of the stage or through the back of the seats. Uh, just go, you know, making sure I look in each row. Okay. Until I get out to the door. Um, yeah, and when you get to the back, uh, and and you're looking under the back row, uh, you you find a few um, white feathers, and uh, weird. They're quite large. Hmm. Um, and um. They look to you. They look to you kind of like chicken feathers. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one up, and okay. when I go out the door, I say, "Sir Eddie, sir, I think I found a clue." Ooh, good man. What What do you think this means? Were there chickens in here? <laughs> I. So, how big are the feathers? Like, what do they look like? Uh, you know, they're like they're good size. They're probably like about this big and um if you look closely at the bottom uh that there's some sort of gluey sub dried gluey substance on them like they've been glued onto something mm. Mm, i think it means maybe if... there were some feather dancers in here at one point wow but in the back like that you'd think they'd be on stage right maybe it's some kind of show where the dancers go out into the audience i've been to shows like that they're not bad i don't know uh, what that means but okay so do you want to keep the feathers just in case they come up again? Maybe yeah. it's something we could ask Lana. It about. might be important. So Eddie, uh, um, Buddy's going to put them in a pocket. Okay. All right. So there's some stairs up here, and I'm thinking you take the left, I take the right, and then we meet in the middle. Okay. You sounds... promise me you don't take your gun out and shoot me. I'll I'll try. <laughs> yeah, it's my kind of guy. <laughs> All right. So I'll go yeah, right, you go so left. As, yeah. as you head up the stairs, right, um, and you get to the top, there's a, a set of French doors that's uh, propped open that presumably leads out to the balcony. And then if you're facing the stage off to the right-hand side at the top of the stairs is another door, and it just has a placard on it that says office. Okay. So still check the uh, check the seats in the balcony okay. and then uh, go to that door. Okay. Um and uh the the door is a little sticky but you put your shoulder into it and it wasn't locked or anything um you know you open the door and there's just like crap everywhere there's papers everywhere and um presumably the office for uh the um you know the theater owner mm-hmm. uh, I, I want so to look through the, the yeah go ahead oh, go ahead I was no, just going I want to look through the papers on the desk. Uh, I want to sort of do a bit of a thing. I want to see if I can see any references to the musician, to the magician, to where he went, to Lana, to any any kind of evidence. Yeah, make a spot hidden rule. 
Mm, 35. Hold on. That should probably be pretty close for you. Yes. That's okay. a regular success. All right. So I, what you're able to kind of piece together is that uh, the theater should be bustling right now. There's, there's lists of ticket sales and um, I, Obviously, the show was sold out for weeks, and um, it's pretty bizarre to you that the the whole place is closed up. Um, you, you keep looking, and then you see uh, notices like uh, for demands of refunds, and um, uh, and then bank notices for failure to make payments on the building, um, and uh, so it's all adding up that what whatever happened in. in in terms of the business side of what's going on was rather sudden and doesn't, doesn't quite make sense why the magician is not there. The sniff test for me. Yeah. It, well, it, it looks like the magician for all intents and purposes should still be performing. Yeah. And like the theater shouldn't be shut up because they were right. doing pretty good business. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So I'm, ex I'll tell buddy all this. Hey, there's something shady going on here. There's some, there's some story about the ma ma magician and Lana. And I, it's even more important that we find her and talk to her because if we're looking for stuff that just doesn't pass the old snifferoo, this is one of them. A theater that's making money doesn't just shut the doors, right? They're in, they're, they're in the business to throw cash in their wallets and they were doing it. And then they just shut in the middle of that. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that does seem strange. Uh, so yeah. while he's... While he's flip, looking through these papers, Buddy would just kind of be, you know, milling around, flashlighting around the outside of the room, uh, seeing yep. if there's anything else interesting there. It, did uh, you look out on the balcony as well? Yeah, I already did the the balcony okay. checking the uh, okay. the seats. Yeah, make another spot hidden. These always go well for me. Come on, you can do it, new dice. <sighs> nope, that's a fail. Fortunately, it's only a ninety-two. Oh, okay. So, so far, these dice have rolled an 88 and a 92. <laughs> it's definitely uh, not the dice. Do it, right. uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's the dice. I tried for you. I, I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate it. Yeah, Buddy's just a little overwhelmed by the mess. I, I think his mind's also still a little caught up with whatever happened with Eddie. Yeah, that was a little uh, weird. And, in the front of the theater. Just saw, I, he's just a little Eddie, and it's a little... <laughs> it's freaking little him out Eddie a little bit. Starfish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. Gross. All right. Um, so I guess it's out to the lobby and trying to search around that area. Because there's got to be a place where Lana's staying, which we haven't found yet. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go out um, to the lobby and look around out there. Okay. Uh, uh, I I think that presumably though, um, as y'all are in, like looking around and searching, like there's really nothing here that looks like anybody's living in the theater. Right. Um, yeah, that's what I was getting is that we've looked all the places. Like she would have slept in the dressing room ostensibly that's the place that she knows the best and she there was no sign of her there so if she's either really diligent about bringing everything with her when she leaves she's got a hidey hole that we just didn't find or she was just sneaking in here for something else but she wasn't actually like using it as a place to sleep but then why would she come in here like drunk late know. at night i don't know I unless like she just truly came in passed out got up and walked out but doesn't have any any comforts of home mm -hmm. um Jesus. i'm thinking fucking... buddy you tell me what you think about this and this isn't just an excuse to go to the bar i think we got to wait for her at the bar and, and talk to her when she comes in again it seems like the only place we can find her for sure okay well let's just do once over again before we leave because I, I i feel like we're missing something here uh, so, uh, you know, Buddy's just going to walk around and try and see if he missed any, you know, any doors, um, any hallways, 
Um, you know, uh, any- make another spot hidden. Okay. Give you another chance. Roll those there dice again. Go. See if you can get them broken oh, in. Oh, uh, hey, there we go. Uh, spot hidden is that is an extreme success. Okay, Woo! so I assume y'all are headed back towards the back of the theater, right? Yep. Okay, as you do, you get towards the front of the stage, and it would make sense that you had missed it because you'd kind of been forward focused. But now that you have your lights shining, um, you realize that there's a latch door that would take you underneath the stage. Okay. Pop that open. Okay. Um, and uh, you look underneath and... So, uh, just so that I can picture this in my head, where is the the door situated? Okay, so the stage is pretty tall, for one. The stage isn't, you know, it's probably about five feet off the floor of the... Wow, um, okay. Right. Yep. And so the door itself is uh, just kind of a hatch that's built in. It looks just like the rest. And there's a, a little clasp at the top and you slide it. The hinges are near the floor and it folds down. OK, so it's facing uh, this door is facing the audience. Yes. OK. Yeah. Got it. OK. OK. And um, when you when you shine your light in, um it's actually dug down a little deeper, right? So, uh, which would make sense for things like trap doors and uh, underneath the stage and things like that. So, uh, as you're shining your light, you could almost crawl through the hatch, put your feet down, and you could be standing up and not hit your head on the bottom of the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, a lot of copper piping that runs under the stage and then. Um, that looks like, uh, some spring loaded platforms that would move up and down. Like you, you see the cross sections of, um, uh, oh my gosh, words are failing me. Uh, like those, um, crank arms that would extend it. Like I'm thinking like a, uh, oh my gosh. Turny thingy. Yeah. But like, um, almost like a car jack or something like that. That's holding up pieces of the the bottom okay. of the stage mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. and so yeah, like, like a lift you, yeah you thing. thank you that 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 <clears throat> word um and so you you know there's plenty of room where stage hands could work under there on the lifts um and one thing that definitely catches your eye as you're looking around is this um copper looking apparatus it looks like a small motor and um, it's attached to copper tubing that's running underneath the stage um, and extends off both sides. What, what, what do you suppose this is, Eddie? And I'm, I'm going to go up to it and, you know, kind of so look around, see if I can figure clear, out what it did is. Did you crawl down in? Oh, yeah, I'm the... in. I'm going in. Okay. Uh, All right. So yeah, go what... ahead. I'm not actually going in. I'm guarding up top. Okay. Um, because I don't want us to get shot down in there. Oh, okay. So okay. I'm saying, all right, buddy, I'm trusting you on this. I'm I'm gonna be guarding your back up here. Okay. And I'm I- I'll be scanning the theater and looking for rats. Okay. Okay. Uh buddy, as, as you walk around under there, because you, you literally can walk around, um, mm-hmm. it feels a little strange at first, like you should bump your head and you right. kind of yep. over-cautiously Definitely. talk, but um, but the reality is, right, There's there are some storage crates, but if you go over to this uh, copper-looking um, looks like the more you inspect, it looks like some sort of motorized pump, and there's these large um, uh, cylinders next to it that would be used for uh, storing gas, essentially. Hmm. Gasoline? No, no. Uh, like, um, like oxidized, like, like gas. That. Oh my gosh. Like oxygen or carbon dioxide, like that. Kind oh, of okay. Gas gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Like um, air tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um. So it almost looks like a like a hydraulic, like a form of hydraulic, right? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Wow. So Buddy would be a little, because, you know, he, he sort of enjoys the whole magic thing. Mm-hmm. And this would be kind of thinking like, are they 
fooling people with this? Like, is this part of like tricks? So, you know, he's still kind of looking around, um, but he would kind of get wrapped up in thinking about that and then try to snap back to the, oh, right, we're looking for Lana. And then go back to looking for, are there any other ways in or out of this area? Okay. And there definitely are. There are, uh, as you as you shine, um, the walls on either side have little hatch doors. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'd probably pretty quickly be able to assess, like, if you went out those, it would put you at the base of the stairwell um, between, like, the doorway in from the, the stage left and stage right and the stairs coming down from the dressing rooms. Okay. So um, I- I'm going to go out. Uh, so it would be stage right, my left, mm-hmm. uh, up and around and sort of come up behind Eddie and go, I found another way out. <laughs> <laughs> so not for nothing, but I'm not standing looking in one direction. I'm yeah. spinning and looking and turning. That's way less I'm fun. I'm listening closely. So <laughs> unless he's he's got ninja-esque. I'm so Eddie, if I found another way out. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, I do need you to make a pal roll, though. Okay. okay. Ooh, interesting. Oh, shit, with a rat up my ass. <laughs> Uh, 68. Is he in the back of your throat or the back of the ass? I don't know which side of the... Well, you're so still on that. By three. I'm still on that. <laughs> I'll give I... you the back of my tongue. Oh. Y'all, y'all uh, stop. Y'all stop. <laughs> never. St- I'm never stopping that. The Rick, the Rick response makes me want to use that for the rest of my life. Uh, so anyways, I missed it by three. Okay. I... Uh, and so as you you kind of hear buddy coming up and you don't you he doesn't scare you but you do kind of whirl around because you're just a little bit on edge and as you do um you kick one of the lines of salt on the outer edge of a circle and it goes kind of uh just sprays inward uh, into the circle. And then does a demon come out and eat my brain? No. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I got to say, Eddie doesn't give a fuck if he just kicks some salt. He doesn't think twice about it. Okay. So, buddy, what are you doing sneaking up on me like this? I almost shit a rat out because of you. What? I, I, oh. Okay, um, so I, I found another way out. There, there's doors Ooh. on either side of the stage. It Ooh, came up right over like by the, the stairs. The magicians are using tricks, like, yeah. like different places on the stage and lights and probably salts that light up if you put a match on them. It's almost like they're not really magical. Well, I mean, I guess I kind of knew it wasn't going to be actual magic, but I didn't realize it was going to be that much trickery. I don't yeah, know how I feel illusions. about this. You want to you want to you want to focus on something magical? How come some guy's head is exploding? Right? That's that's something. That's something we can't explain. Well, yeah, Stage magic. You can always explain that. But I wonder how much that has to do with like designs on a stage. That I've, exploding? I, I've read books about this this kind of this kind of stuff. Those things, but you never. This there's all kinds of supernatural stuff we don't know about. Yeah, I, it's not, I don't. I think that's probably true. I just don't think it happens on a stage with a magician and a, a, a beautiful assistant, and they're trying to take the money out of your wallet when you show up and and watch their performance. There's nothing wrong with it, yeah. but it's always fakes. You're probably right. All right, well let's let's keep looking. See if we we found it one secret place. Maybe there's other secret places in here. Um, right, so I you, guess we'll go back and up the stairs and into the searching here into the thing. You know, into the hallway. Do another look around okay. there. Yep. Uh, back up to the dressing rooms. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, they're exactly as y'all left them, except um, when you look out the, uh, when you go to the dressing room, they all had windows, right? That mm-hmm. looked outside. Remember? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, it, It's, it's pitch black outside. Uh, we went in in the morning. Wait, yeah. Eddie. 
What? What is? What? Why is it? Why is it dark out there? Hmm. All right. So I want to get up. So to to look in the window or to get in the window, did we have like climb up a couple boxes inside yep. too? Yeah. Uh, All right. So no, I'm not climbing. inside, but outside, right? No, yeah. on the inside. I'm saying. Oh, on the way. inside. No, 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 no. It's like you know, it's a window ledge. It's a couple feet off the ground. Okay. So I'm going to the window ledge and I'm looking outside. Yeah, and I, you know, the boxes are still. It's just nighttime. Well, mm. Sir, Eddie, sir, what what's going on? Something interesting is happening. So you want to know, and I'm getting a bit excited here. I'm like, okay. you want to know what really is interesting? Not this bullshit fake magic that they do on a stage. How did that just happen to us? We're in here for what? An hour? Half an hour? I don't know how long it's been. Ooh. I got a rat climbing up my ass. We find some interesting stuff about the theater. And all of a sudden, it's 10 hours later, 12 hours later, and it's nighttime? What the hell's going on with that? That's fascinating. But we, we don't know what time it is. That's pretty interesting. Maybe it's an eclipse. We got to get outside and we got to get to that bar where we think Lana's going to be. And ask him what time it is and what maybe happened to the last day. And what maybe day it is. Ooh, this is getting spooky. Hey, so stop just, that, Eddie. <laughs> I'm jumping out the window. Okay. Getting to the boxes uh, and climbing on down. Uh, so Buddy's going to turn around, make sure there's nothing behind us, and then head out the window after Eddie. Okay. Uh, both of you make sand rolls. Yeah. Yeah, that is a 20. So, yep, I made it. Okay. I missed. Okay. Uh, Just by so, a little bit. All right. So, buddy, take a point of damage. Okay. And uh, Eddie, take three. Um, it just it, as much as Eddie's trying to project this kind of carefree attitude about what's going on, uh, what he was passing off as a rat running up his leg is just starting to feel less and less right given the circumstances of of the day mm -hmm. shifting tonight so quickly um you know he's trying to rationalize oh maybe we were in there two hours or or three and then that still only gets him to the afternoon and he's he can't he just can't come up with where where you're at is buddy hungry great question um and now that Buddy's like out of there and he thinks about it and he's gotten outside of the window, mm -hmm. um, he's all, all of a sudden just ravenous. Okay. Eddie, sir, Eddie, sir, I'm starving. Are you hungry? Mm, well, I just had a little bit of rat, but maybe I could eat something else. Wait, did you find the rat <laughs> and <laughs> eat it? It's a joke, buddy. Oh, it's a whew. joke. No, let's go get let's go get some hamburgers and we'll talk. Okay. Uh, so, um, Eddie, you're not so hungry. No, nah, I'd mm. still go with them for burgers. Weird. Yeah, of okay. course. Uh, so, uh, Buddy is super interested, obviously, to find food first, um, yeah. but he also wants to look at a newspaper. Okay. Because he's really and... worried that like it's a different year or some shit. Yeah. 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 Um. <clears throat> And the so you're walking you're walking by there's there's one blowing by on the street and you pick it up and it's um it's still from the the morning's edition of the paper um from when you went in there that wouldn't okay. confirm that it's still the same day uh, right but, yeah right. yeah um, but it at least like if that's blowing around right at least kind of settles uh, buddy a little bit okay uh, that yeah. Okay. All right. So then I guess we'll head to, you know, whatever the nearest sort of diner kind of restaurant is. Okay. Uh, you're sitting down and, you know. And what, what time is it? It's late. It's probably 1030 at night. Holy uh, When you shit. get to the diner. Yeah. It's been more than 12 uh, hours. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, and as you're, as you're sitting down. Uh, like I said, you, buddy, you're ready to order like every single thing on the menu. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eddie, uh, I, I, we can have a waitress come up. She goes, uh, if I'm not that hungry, I'll get us uh, like some French fries or something. Sure. Um, 
and but uh buddy as you kind of order like you go through yeah, like two cheeseburgs and, and a milkshake and <laughs> yeah. yeah and and then eddie asks for like a side of fries yeah yeah okay uh is anything else different so the, the reason buddy's asking is buddy reads comic books okay so this to buddy feels like you know a time travel like twilight zone kind of thing um you know there's no twilight zone yet but um yeah you know he's he's looking around to see if uh you know if everything looks the same as it did do all the cars look the same um you know is, is there anything that looks like we're in a different place um and, and and in fact the waitress like kind of notices you spacing off a little bit as you order and and she just says everything all right with you hon uh, oh I, i'm sorry ma'am yes I, i'm just i'm just very very hungry all right all right well i'll i'll see how fast we can get these for you and all you want's a side of fries that's all i need thank you i'm not that hungry all right and she puts her pencil up and and she goes and she walks away and it's just it's more like i think buddy it's more your projection of of what's going on with reality than, okay. than being able to observe anything that's that's changed mm -hmm. okay and i'll I, not for nothing but i'm also going to order a nice hot steaming cup of joe okay and um as as y'all as but you just kind of haul through these hamburgers uh Eddie kind of pushes the fries around and he nibbles on one. He he does. You do notice him finish his coffee, um, but he doesn't. He doesn't hmm. really eat any of his fries. Hey, 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 sir, Eddie, sir, are you going to finish those? Uh, no, you can have them. I just want the coffee. <laughs> but he's eating them. Um, all right, and and I think. But well, maybe like this would be kind of uh, uh, just a great fadeaway scene. 1030 at night, uh, Buddy and Eddie sitting at the table in the diner and Buddy eating everything. And y'all are, are the only ones at the table in the window under the sh under the street light. Yep. And we'll close there. <laughs> that sounds amazing. All right. That is going to do it for us tonight. Until next time, you can find us at underthelibrary.com, on Twitter at under the LIB, on Instagram at under the library. So until next time, for me and Michael, for Scott, Rick, and Emily, and for the absent Chris and Wayne, thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you next time.